and sell bean pies, you think that you know you're not part of the living dead. You're just as dead as all those of whom you claim you're trying to raise. Your actions against me prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. You're not a black Muslim. You're not black. You're a dark European. And see, since you don't know nothing about me, you don't even know what that is. You want to accuse somebody and talk about somebody, but don't even know them. But I want to make that clear. Now I have to talk and speak the truth of what happened. I'm not going to try to make myself look good. And I'm not going to make them look like they the big bad wolf either. I'm going to tell it just like it was. No more, no less. So let me explain what happened. This does not, again, have nothing to do with Brother Farrakhan at all. Period. Chances are he was never even told of the incident. But I'm going to tell because it needs to be told. Because this type of situation should be avoided. It should never happen again. This was the type of situation that caused Malcolm to be murdered. And isn't it funny that in the week of Malcolm's assassination, that something like this would happen? Because this is the kind of mentality that caused Brother Malcolm to be murdered. An unarmed man shot down in front of his wife and children. This type of mentality. We lost one of our greatest warriors, one of our greatest soldiers, because of this mentality of dark Europeans. Not black folks, because black people should have learned a long time ago. Dark Europeans, and that's why I tell y'all, just because somebody say assalamu alaikum, hotel, and all that, just because they have dark skin, don't mean that they have their mindset their mindset have evolved to black. The dark European, those with black skin, is your number one enemy. You think it's white folks. Because before you can get started, these dark Europeans will put their foot in your ass first. They are the number one reason why we cannot unify and do what we need to do. Please allow me quickly to describe the situation. It was a Sunday morning and for some reason I just wanted to go somewhere to some place of worship that is more in a line to myself. So the first places that I felt like I wanted to go was the uh, Muhammad's Mosque or either go visit Pastor Ray Hagen. It was too early to go visit Pastor Hagen's uh, African village, so I decided I'll go uh, listen to Brother, uh, the, the minister of the Nation of Islam here in St. Louis, Brother Donald Muhammad. And I get the uh, emails from them promoting whatever activity they were having on uh, Sunday and it was supposed to be Brother Donald Muhammad. So when I get to the mosque, they have the big screen, uh, it's not a TV, but anyway, it's some type of big screen where they are webcasting from Chicago. And the featured speaker is uh, our brother Ishmael Muhammad. I have nothing against brother Ishmael Muhammad. Nothing at all. I have nothing against no one. However, I wanted to hear, and I was seeking, I wanted to hear brother Donald Muhammad. Because brother Donald Muhammad, he saw, he's a Mississippi brother. Has a 
Mississippi twang, you know, Southern twang. I like his style of how he brings the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. I really do not care to listen to Ishmael Muhammad. Now, he is being promoted for being whatever, and Brother Farrakhan is pushing and wants everyone to listen to Brother Ishmael, and this is done because Brother Ishmael is a son of Elijah Muhammad, physical son of Elijah Muhammad. And I remember listening to Louis Farrakhan explaining about the Rockefellers and these white people, how they integrate their families and how the Bush family or whatever is integrated and they related, how they make these clans. And so he was trying to say how he wants to blend the Farrakhan line or blood with the Elijah Muhammad's blood line and that sort of thing. My problem with that sort of thinking is that that's the white man. That's how the Caucasian people do it. What are you doing when you're concentrating on the Farrakhan Elijah Muhammad bloodline? You're trying to create division among your people. You're excluding everybody. So you're part of this bloodline. And this is the sad thing about it. In Elijah Muhammad's bloodline, there is nobody physically blood of Elijah Muhammad that has done anything to really uplift his teaching. The greatest helpers of Elijah Muhammad were those who were converted to his teaching. The greatest destroyers of his teaching was, of course, his son, Warren D. Muhammad, that took the nation and flipped and flopped it and totally destroyed what his father built. So why would you, what, what is the benefit of, of an Elijah Muhammad bloodline and Farrakhan bloodline mix? What is the, what is the, the benefit except the exclusion of everybody else. So, Brother Farrakhan is speaking and talking about how he wants to mix the Farrakhan bloodline with Elijah Muhammad's bloodline and all like that. Everybody clapping. <laughs> yay, yay. Don't you realize you've been excluded? That don't have nothing to do no part of you. You, as far as if this is the example he's teaching, you're being taken out of the divine. You're not included. So what are you clapping for? You're not part of it. You're not part of Elijah Muhammad. You're not part of Farrakhan bloodline. So what are you clapping for? We're talking about physical bloodline. So there's separation. There's division. Somebody is better than another. You're not part of Elijah Muhammad? The reason why Ishmael Muhammad is on that rostrum is simply because of his bloodline. Because there are many young brothers that represent Minister Farrakhan that teach way better, look better, and is more attractive to the people than Ishmael Muhammad. But Ishmael Muhammad has Elijah Muhammad's blood. So, really what is going to happen is that Brother Farrakhan is going to deny the nation life. Because when he passes this world, no one is going to be, nobody is going to gravitate toward this person simply because of his blood. Now, the believers will as long as they believe, but the masses of the people are not tripping on his blood. When they come to Chicago, they are hoping to hear Minister Louis Farrakhan, and then when they sit in their seats, 
they get disappointed because here comes Ishmael Muhammad. That's the truth. Y'all say that y'all can handle the truth. That's the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter is that a, a uh, joining of Muhammad and Farrakhan bloodline is division in your family. That's, that's the problem with racism. Because somebody's better. The, the black is inferior while the white is superior. Or uh, gender bias. The male is better than the female. A separation. One is better. Or classism. Because I'm rich. It's the same thing. You're not being part of it. When it should be an inclusion of everybody, why is there a concentration on two families? And that's the family of Elijah Muhammad and the family of Farrakhan. What about you? And you, the little fella out in the audience, y'all the ones doing the real work. You're on the street with the bean pies and the final call. But you are being excluded and this clan that's being developed getting all the credit. Don't get angry at me. That's exactly what has happened and happening. You say you can handle the truth. That's the truth of the matter. What you clapping for? You ain't no part of it. When you donate to number two poor, are you getting any of that money? Only the Farrakhan Muhammad family. Ain't that right? You get angry at Alzheimer's. And you know when you get older, you, you forget things. So I want you to judge me. If the brother was right and I insulted the minister, I will apologize because I had no intent to uh, insult somebody who I admire at all. So you listen to the video. It's at the very beginning. It's, the, it's, it's a video series. It's uh, seven videos. But I believe what he's talking about is part one. Because you know folks don't really like. They can't listen a whole hour. <laughs> you know. Well some of y'all can. It's according to what's being said. But anyway, he's tripping off when I was talking about in the video, I was complaining about not getting that interview with Brother Farrakhan. And he said that I said that Brother Farrakhan himself denied me the interview. I did not say that. I said there were those around Brother Farrakhan who knew that I wanted that interview that made no effort to help me get the interview. That's what I said. And I said, those people have some type of a problem. Because I'm very sure if Brother Farrakhan knew I wanted 10 minutes with him, I'm pretty sure he would have done it. What's the big deal? But see, you have those who are glory hounds. This, you know, it's, it's like... Uh, you got a woman, and she's just so fine and everything, and you get jealous. You don't want nobody else to have a part of it. You know that feeling? So you have these, these people that are like that. Then another factor is that brother Donald that I was telling you about, that brother has always had a problem, really, with me. He may treat me nice to a certain point, but he, have, he has always had a problem with me because I always been different. I was a follower of Elijah Muhammad under Brother Farrakhan, but I always thought for myself. I always questioned things. I was always different. And I challenged their authority. Because that's what Elijah Muhammad taught me. He taught me as a fruit of Islam, as a FOI, he told me not to be a robot. Fast moving, quick thinking right down to the modern times. I'm not nobody's robot. Yours are nobody's. I question. Elijah Muhammad said he can be questioned. So I question Elijah. Since he's not here, then I question your ass. And because you bring an 
answer and you think I'm just supposed to accept it, not happening. It's not adequate. Brother Dollar also knows I view him as a coward. I view him as a coward. And other things. Incompetent man. Glory how. He knows these things. See you don't know him. Don't tell me about. About this man. I work with him. You wasn't around. None of y'all was. So of course. You don't want me. To get an interview. With brother Farrakhan. It was that type of mentality. So here goes the captain who don't know nothing. And so I asked the brother, what did I say that was an insult to the minister? Well, why are you here you insulted the minister? I'm here because I like being here. It's the nation of Islam is where I come from. I was invited here. I sacrificed. I gave him my time to help build this and get this so it can be in existence. I stood in front of Louis Farrakhan willing to take a bullet. And then, and but it's a problem. My family, who brought me and, and uh, was introduced me to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. My relatives gave thousands of dollars. And myself, thousands of dollars, hours and hours of time. And this is how you're going to treat me. You're going to run up on me and accuse me of insulting the minister. And then I ask the brother, what did I say? He's going to tell me, you, you know what you said. No. Do you know how many videos I make? No, I don't know what I said. What did I say? Here's a, the captain of the FOI claiming supreme wisdom, accusing me of something, and don't even know what I said. You should be embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for you. Because you claim you're so intelligent, you have the supreme wisdom, la di da la di da and you accuse somebody of something and can't bring no damn evidence. Let's go look it up on the computer. You shouldn't have to look nothing up on no computer. Whatever I said, tell me. Can't tell me nothing. So he gets to screaming and hollering at me and puts his body into my car. I'm getting ready. I'm inside my car with the engine running, getting ready to leave. The brothers surround my car. I got FOI around the car. Intimidating. My heart racing. Because I know the mentality of these people they might try to hurt me. So there's a tense situation. I'm watching his every move. I'm watching their every move. I have only one defense. If they try to like snatch me out the car or harm me, I have no choice but to take that car and run them over. That's what would have happened. This man disrespect me, hollering and screaming, and then can't even produce the insult. Listen to the video yourself. I don't insult nobody. I will talk about your ideology, your opinion, or whatever. I don't talk about people's mama. I don't call you uneducated and foolish. I don't do that. If you show me any video, when I do that, I will take it down. I'm not into childish name calling. This man, can y'all even tell me? I'll tell you something. See, this man is the example of the rest of the FOI. Bad example. i tell you this. This is a poor captain. This man can get those brothers Seriously hurt if they follow. But see, woo, I'm so happy for the creation because while the incident was going on, I'm trying to maintain my
my cool, I'm looking at the eyes of some of those FOI, and a lot of them did not approve. Especially when I said I was willing to take a bullet for Louis Farrakhan, a lot of them start looking at him crazy. I'm here. I donate to your temple. I buy your newspapers. I work seven years so you can have this. I sacrifice. This how you treat me? Those brothers start looking at him. Because this man has gone insane. He's a madman. He reminds me, <clears throat> excuse me, he reminds me of this brother that was a lieutenant. Lieutenant is next to captain. We were in front of the mosque one day, one night. And it was a sister walking with a white fellow down the street. And the brother lieutenant said, look at that devil walking with one of our sisters. And so he suggested to us that we beat the white guy up. And uh, I spoke out. And I said to him, what's the purpose of that? You want to beat the white guy up for what? So the sister can run down to the nearest payphone, call 911, and then the police come, arrest our ass, throw our ass in jail, and then nobody has no money for no bail. Who knows how long somebody going to sit around? What's the benefit? When we sit in jail and that sister still going to be with the white guy. Who cares? And the brother going to tell me, you being insubordinate, you're damn skippy. Because that's stupid. I'm not going to jail over that nonsense. There's no benefit. And so he looking at me and he decided to change his mind. You should have never thought that way to begin with. You're a damn fool. And here's a man 10 or 12 years older than me. Thinking crazy. So here's the captain of the Nation of Islam in St. Louis hollering and screaming, throwing spit all in my car over nothing. Something you can't even prove. What's the benefit? But there's a detriment because if I was not me, what you have gained is an enemy. You gain somebody who won't support you no more. And you want to try to be tough. Then some, you ain't the only one that can get tough. But see, I thought I was a place of peace. So if I go to a church, if I go to a synagogue, if I go to a mosque, I don't expect violence. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I got to get a drink on that one, y'all. <laughs> you don't expect to get jumped on in a place of peace, do you? The worst thing that could have happened, I got to come back and give you some of mine. That's how we operate. That's how I go down. And I want to say to the captain of the Nation of Islam in St. Louis, what was the benefit? Now you look bad. You ever heard of public relations? You make Minister Firecon look bad. Because you supposed to represent him. But I'm trying to I'm trying to do my best to control public relations for you. Because I have no malice. It was an incident, it happened. Let us learn <clears throat> from the incident. Because black folks. I don't know what it is about us, dark Europeans, not black, because black people, we have learned our lesson. But dark Europeans calling themselves black, when we start hating another black man, woo, oh man, we, we really hate, I, woo, I hate that, who 
I hate him. I hate her. Man, we hate. If we hated America and these racist Caucasians the way we hate ourselves, boy, we would really be progressing using that energy of hatred. We really hate black folks. Do you know that the greatest killers, the greatest murderers, the greatest troublemakers on the earth have been those who claim they are peaceful? Study the history of Christianity. Study the history of Islam. Study religion. It's bloody. Filled with hatred, rape, murder, everything that you can think of. Then they turn around, once they kill you and you submit to them, how peaceful it is. We so full of peace, peace, peace. First of all, there's no such thing as peace. What you call peace is controlled violence. I'll say it again. What you call peace is controlled violence. This human being have no idea and have never experienced peace at no time. In your fictional fantasy world you have, but in our reality, in all the history that we have, it's full of bloodshed, violence, rape, envy, jealousy, hatred of women, hatred of the poor. And blase, blase. These people, many Christians will hate you because you won't accept Jesus Christ. They hate your guts. Go to hell. They'll tell you that quick. Same thing in Islam. You better accept Allah. They fill with hatred and violence. They want to control the world. And I want to just skip back real quick to the incident. If brother had a problem with me back almost a year ago, I insulted the minister. My telephone number is on the video. Brother Donna Muhammad had my telephone number. Since you are, since you are on YouTube, you can email my channel. And you can talk to me and say and ask me, get a more understanding of what I was trying to say. I don't insult Minister Farrakhan. I admire him. That's my big brother. If there was no Farrakhan, chances are again, I couldn't be talking to you. Why would I insult him? Now, I can critique his decisions. I can critique the teachings, whatever he's talking about. But as far as he as a person, no. Or is it that you really fear my critique of the teaching and opinion? You can't handle the real truth. Is that the real insult? Because if you bring any of that to me, you brag about you have the supreme wisdom and all this kind of stuff. I'll destroy it piece by piece. It no longer means nothing in 2011 because the people are not dependent on belief no more they want actual facts people are self-thinking they are no longer zombies in the mind you can get that off to some black folks but more and more white folks and others around the earth who are not caught up in religion and all religion is slave making. All religion makes robots. All religion creates followers. And then those who are leaders, the followers blindly follow them. That was the problem. That's why this incident occurred. Because this blind follower thought I was insulting his leader. Because he's a follower, not a leader upon himself. And why are you so upset over some words? You tripping off a YouTube video. And why are you going to get so angry at me when white folks and all kinds of people talk about and really do insult Louis Farrakhan?
God every day. But you know something? See, let me tell y'all something. <clears throat> I'm going to bring this video to conclusion. This mentality that this dark European Muslim has. Do you realize? Listen. This man came to me filled with rage and hatred. Why? To another black man. I can guarantee you he has never done that to no white fella, no racist white guy or woman or nobody like that. But he'll come to another black man. You know why? I want to remind y'all of something that the black Muslims don't talk about. Your first slave master was an African. They were black. That's who, the, that's who enslaved you first. Your own people. They were the first slave master. Lock you up in pig pen. They, the large tribes, destroyed the little tribes, took the women, killed the men, or bartered them off, traded with the white man for the captives. Your first slave master was black. The white man came later on. In fact, the white man learned about slavery and how to enslave by watching black folks. That's who taught them. The only difference was the white man got good at it. That's what happened. Everything, if the black man, <clears throat> if the black man is the original man and we are the teachers of everybody else, we are the fathers of civilization. We're the first. We are the first murderer. You are the first liar. You are the first one to disrespect your women. They all learned it from you because you was first. It ain't always good being first. Malcolm X was killed by black men. You want to blame uh, white folks for self-hatred when this self-hatred was demonstrated long before the coming of this pale fella. But see, when the pale fella, fella came on the scene, since you want to be an idiot, he's going to show you exactly how it's done. Do you believe Excuse me. Do you really believe that with the mentality that these groups like Nation of Islam and the New Black Panther Party and some of these others, do you believe if they had power, you think they'll love you? No. They enslave you. They could be worse than the white man. <laughs> During the Sunday meeting, Ishmael Muhammad bragged about how great his teachings are. I will challenge Ishmael Muhammad. I challenge Farrakhan. I challenge all these guys. I debate you down to the nitty gritty. And I break all of you down. Because it's time to bring you out of darkness. You think that you're in the light and you're not. You're just as dead as anybody else is. Except you're dead with a bow tie. You're a dark European. Master Farah Muhammad used Islam to counter the Christianity. I want to say this to us. See, Elijah Muhammad taught we are not robots. 
But when some of us don't behave like robots, the blind followers get upset. <clears throat> Brother Donald, always the blind follower. They, they sound like Mr. Farrakhan DVD tapes and records. If Louis Farrakhan don't say it, they don't have nothing else to add. Blind follower, robot. That is not what Elijah Muhammad wanted. Period. He said, I don't want no blind followers. I don't want no robots. Do not take the Jews or the Christians as friends. Or you will be considered one. And basically, God don't like ugly. They are the enemies of God. So why is Farrakhan always in a church? Why is he always trying to be friends with Jews? You contradicting yourself. And now you friends with Ron L. Hubbard and Scientology and the boys. What's up with all that? But when you're a blind follower, whatever, because you're a blind follower. My relatives gave thousands of dollars to Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam. And what do they have to show for it? They don't have nothing except talk. That's all. <coughs> Blind followers. You want to get angry at me? You don't like the truth? I'm telling you the truth. The real truth, not your imagination. Clearly, your interpretations have produced no results. Because you're still deaf, dumb, and blind. You're deaf, dumb, and blind. Now you wear a bow tie. You're deaf, dumb, and blind. Now you're selling bean pie. You're deaf, dumb, and blind. And you threaten to kill other black people. And that's what you've done to Malcolm. And they still brag about it. Tell about Malcolm was a hypocrite. If Malcolm is a hypocrite, then Elijah Muhammad and Farrakhan was too. Because they came out of the Christian church. And they said, glory to Jesus. But then they turned on Jesus. They became a Judas and a Benedict Arnold. They became hypocrites. So what should be done to those who become a hypocrite when they once said, I love Jesus. Malcolm stopped following Elijah Muhammad, but he still held on to the Quran. So how was he a hypocrite? He just didn't want nothing else to do with you no more. Simple as that. You are a murderer and a killer. When you look at another black man, you got murder in your heart. Can't you see you are sick? To think like that. But that is expected because the first slave owner was black. And you don't want to admit that. I'm not taking white folks off the hook because they done what they done. But also at the same time, the reality and the real truth is your first slave master. And if it wasn't for the first slave master, the white man would have to take the full blame, but he can't because he learned what he learned from somebody that was black. He learned science, he learned mathematics, he learned philosophy, and he learned slavery from black, the African. He learned division, classism. Patriarchy, all those things. He learned it from watching the teacher, the one that raised this beast up out of the caves of Europe. They were black. And he watched his black father. And he see how it's done. You got to get yourself together. You got to get yourself together. 
You got to wonder why you hate black people so much. You've been taking our money all these years. And what you have you given the black community, unlike, <clears throat> unlike Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad created businesses all over this country. This nation of Islam, founded by a follower, not a leader, a follower. And the leader is dead. He no longer exists. Elijah Muhammad taught against following dead people. Now you have made Elijah Muhammad Christ. You have made him Jesus. You made him dead. He's a dead man. He's not here. What do you think the result going to be? The only reason why the nation of Islam is doing as well as it has done because of the entertainment, the entertainment value of Louis Farrakhan's voice. That's all. And you see what the result is. Because y'all blind followers, you're not like the bee. Knowing what your role is. You're looking for somebody to follow instead of being a leader yourself. And he's separating himself from you. Because he don't want his blood mixed with your blood. But in a beast family, the blood is shared with everybody. Follow me. Follow. Follow me. But nobody asks you to share leadership. Be your own leader. They want that glory to themselves. So when you look in the history book, it's all about them. They never talk about those who helped the queen. They always talk about what Farrakhan do. Farrakhan couldn't, could not have done anything without my help. I helped him. A whole lot of us, we don't get no credit for nothing now and then. He's the divine. It's his blood mixed with Elijah Muhammad's blood. But not like the bee, shared blood. So it's up to you. What do you want? You want to keep following folks and be their damn slave? Or do you really want to be free? Once and for all. Not just black folks. None of you deserve to be a slave. And you wonder why? Brother Farrakhan, friends with Muammar Gaddafi, all rich nation. But it's people poor and suffering. This your friend. And you know that this man doing this to his people. That should make you question. All over the earth there's an uprising. People tired of being somebody else's damn slave. So Muammar Gaddafi all this oil. He will floor show and give some Muslims some money. But his own people, he don't give nothing. He wants them to be his slave. 